Hi everyone, so the December 2020 update is out for Diablo 4 and I gotta say it looks amazing. So this one dives deep into itemization, into skills and uh, some other small topics. And the positive from what I've seen is very positive and it really seems they are trying hard to make this a great game and they're also listening to a lot of the feedback that we have seen from the other updates. So you might remember that uh, when we have seen the first iterations of items and stats, legendary powers and so on from the previous posts that um, there was a lot of discussions, there was a lot of uh, doubt about if it, they're going the right direction and they really did a lot of work here I believe. So I'm gonna walk you through it and give my own input but overall I gotta say this is a very nice update. I think they're going in the right direction with this and uh, if they keep going with this and keep building on this obviously nothing here is final, the game is still you know years away at this point. This can be amazing. So this is all I want to share right at the start and let's jump into it. So here's a table of contents. We have the skill tree, we have the primary stats, weapon types, item qualities, legendary affixes and uniques. And uh, well, they talk a little bit about the philosophy and you know the, the time schedule. The next update is going to be on Plisk Online. And so this, I think it's going to be in February uh, 2021. And they also hinted that there will be the new class revealed. Uh, because they talk about um, a new version of the campfire scene. So we're most likely going to see some big update there yet again. But let's focus on this one here. So they do talk about um, their philosophy. And especially the second and the third uh, points here are very interesting. So they say they want to provide customization for items or with items. And they do, shouldn't really completely define everything you do, but more like enhance the character that you're building. And I think this is a very good philosophy because what we have seen in the Aldo 3 is that items define pretty much everything. They define your power, your skills that you can use. Basically, you are completely locked in in most cases. And the, that a, a lot of things, a lot of uh, skills on a class, a lot of tools that a class has completely um, fall into the background and become completely unuseless. So in most cases, you have a six-piece set and you cannot really use anything else to anywhere close to the same effectiveness than what it says on that set or whatever uh, legendary parts you have. Whereas when you have a system like in Diablo 2, you can you know still spec into a certain skill and you can use it along with your other skills. So you can build your frost wizard and you can still have like your fire hydra that you know still can deal with other enemies or other immunities or whatever and you can still use it to some degree at least and uh, not maybe not at a full efficiency not uh, at the full highest potential but it's still possible while in the other field, for example it wouldn't even deal like one percent of the damage of the other skills so this is a big issue and i believe that also with the items you're gonna see here there are some examples we can definitely see that uh, there is still the possibility to kind of like mix and match things and you know have maybe like a focus and you know like a, a strong main skill and then have like some other utility skills or some supporting DPS skills or something like that. At least this is the direction that they are going from what I can tell while still giving you the option to you know really double down on one mechanic if you like. And they also mentioned that the overall depth of the itemization should be somewhere between the Diablo 2 and the Diablo 3. I believe that is a very good choice, so you know, if it's like Diablo 2.5 basically, um, that would be great. In Diablo 3, we do have a lot of the, these really build-defining, very strong legendary powers, while on the other hand in Diablo 2 we also have a lot of like these very, you know, very minor uniques basically, where you know they just might have like a few different stats, but they're not really any special, not really any good. And then you have like other uniques that actually define builds on their own as well, because they give you another skill or they completely enhance a certain skill or any kind of uh, kind of thing like that and i believe that this is also uh, very positive news here for the skill tree they mentioned that it's gonna be possible to reskill your character but it's not gonna be without cost so they want to have choices matter they want you to build your character and kind of get attached to it and uh, still not really rule out the possibility to redo it if you really want to. So I assume that uh, this is something that you might want to do, you know, after playing a build for, you know, some days, some weeks, depending on, you know, how far you want to progress, how far you want to optimize all the things. Or, you know, you might realize that your build is absolutely not working out. So it's really good to have this option without having to re-level everything. And this is definitely nice without really having this kind of like, 
non-attached feeling where in the other three you just like swap everything around all the time and uh, no one really cares. So I think this is very nice and uh, this attachment that you build with a character will definitely be noticeable and this is really important for these kind of games I believe. They also talk about primary stats. So we had these angelic powers and demonic powers uh, back in the earlier updates. So they are completely gone now, it seems. And instead they focus more on like main stats. So there is like uh, strength, dexterity, uh, willpower, dex uh, and um, intelligence. So these are like the main stats here. And uh, you can like basically put points into them more like the other two. And they will have uh, their own effects depending on the class you're playing. So there's an example here. So we have uh, skill damage increase and defense for strength if you're playing a barbarian. Then intelligence gives you auras. Willpower gives you resources and healing. The exterior gives you crit and dodge. So you can see that uh, all these stats kind of have their own impact. They have their own like level of customization. I believe this is pretty cool. And you can also see that, for example, for the wizard or for the sorceress, you have a, a different um, effects for all these main stats. So here the strength gives you defense and the intelligence gives you the skill damage and auras and willpower gives you crit and healing and dexterity gives you resource and dodge. So it's pretty cool to have these uh, kind of like different avenues of character progression and uh, also the character customization. So I think that this concept at least looks very promising and then you can you know really go f f all in on you know like one specific stat maybe have a really resource hungry build and uh, there's like some mechanic uh, maybe similar to arcane blast and, and wow from the mage or so where the skill you know deals more and more damage but also costs more and more resource so maybe you want to really stack resource generation and resource reduction for something like that uh, or you have some other skills that really benefit and get some extra effects when you crit so really go for crit there um, I really hope that they're not gonna make crit like the uh, the number one scaling mechanic for everything yet again. So we had that in the other three. Essentially, every single build in the game scales crit and crit damage, and uh, overall that is like very boring. So when you have these different uh, ways of building a character, I think we should also be able to use them. And really hope that at least with the values you see here, they don't really seem extremely potent. So at least with you know these low level characters, I mean these are level 21 characters, max level is going to be much higher, you're going to have much higher stats. But if they keep the values in check, I think this can be very interesting here without focusing everything on only crit stats for example. Another really interesting point here is that you can unlock upgrades to skills from your skill tree. So you have seen the skill tree in the last update. Uh, basically you unlock skill points as you level in, in, in with your character and you can kind of like select a path to take on a skill tree and this will give you more skills and also upgrade them or add other powers to those skills. And now there's like even more to that with your character stats. So I think this is a very amazing concept and you can see an example here of Whirlwind. So you have the base skill that you can unlock and then you can first of all select which weapon is gonna use for this like a specialty for Barbarian. You have this so-called arsenal. So you can like choose different weapons for different skills and these kind of things. And uh, then you see here is an upgrade that Whirlwind restores fury every time you hit enemies. And there's another upgrade and this one is locked behind a certain stat requirement. So 150 dexterity will give you extra movement speed while you're whirling. And then you have this other upgrade here for 225 strength and dexterity where you get additional crit damage uh, and the longer you whirl around. So I think these kind of effects are very interesting and it's going to be pretty cool to try to build characters around you know, certain like stat breakpoints that give you uh, an unlock to, uh, to one of these upgrades. And I think thematically and uh, you know with the character building fantasy, this is gonna be amazing. So you have like this you know strength dexterity stacking barbarian. Maybe another one is like a super like willpower stacking barbarian, and you have kind of like some spell effects that unlock from rolling around, and suddenly you shoot uh, some some lightning and frost all around you or something like that. Uh, I believe the possibilities there are amazing. And uh, this definitely looks really awesome. So th this makes also the stats matter much more. So you kind of like want to plan ahead of how to build your character, you know, what items to take, how to spend your points. And uh, I think that uh, this, this is gonna feel great once you finally unlock this uh, one upgrade and suddenly you, you can feel the, the effectiveness, yeah. Here's another such example for the, uh, the sorceress. So it is like called Ice Blades. So this seems to con conjure up or like summon some kind of minion that automatically attacks. 
and here you have an upgrade for example increases the duration by five seconds doesn't really require anything and here's another upgrade where with enough willpower those ice blades will also uh, deal additional damage to frozen targets so after chilling them for a while they become frozen and then you will deal extra damage so this goes along you know it kind of ties everything together with like extra proc chances that you might get or maybe extra car speed and these kind of things and again i think this is a very good way to improve your character and to feel the impact that your items that your choices make here they talk about weapon types i think this part is not really too interesting so basically what they're saying is that uh, yeah, different weapons have different damage and different attack speeds i mean here's an example uh, it says very fast weapon on the wand and it says slow weapon on the staff. I mean, yeah, I know that pretty much everyone knows that a staff is slower than a wand and that a two-handed mace is slower than a sword. So nothing really special there. Uh, a lot of people seem to be unhappy with this weapon attack value. So it seems like basically one item type has a fixed attack value and uh, then you have this other weapon type for example the staff has much higher value than the wand but obviously it's lower so in terms of dps which is uh, the stat that usually matters in these kind of games um, you probably just have to go with whatever gives you the, the highest attack speed plus damage or like multiplied of damage so we'll see about that um, the weapon attack seems yeah a little bit too bland uh, essentially, it's not really much different from like the DPS value that you compare in Diablo 3, for example. But I also believe that this is yeah, looking a little bit too simple. So people really want to have like a minimum and a maximum range. I think that would be cool to have this played. I mean, it's the standard for pretty much all these games. And even though it doesn't really matter much and it averages out really fast, it's still great to have these ranges, I, I believe. And then maybe you could have like this DPS value again displayed because this is usually what people care about more. And also, yeah, just not even knowing the attack speed of a weapon like in, in uh, decimal values is kind of a problem. I hope that at least somewhere in the character details this is shown. We need this information. We need to know how well our character performs, what is even possible, like how much damage we deal. Like this is vital information. And uh, the interface really shouldn't be dumped down too much. And on the item itself, I guess this is fine. Eventually, for people that really care about finding out about the details, about the, the theory behind all these items and all the, the, the game and the skill and the theory crafters, you know, they will figure this out, out anyway. And you know, eventually, you will know by heart, okay, the stuff is 1.0 attack speed, the wand is 1.5 attack speed, or whatever. Not seeing this anywhere in the game is going to be a problem. Here's a little example of this in action. So the staff is quite slow in the attack speed and the wand is faster. Basically enabling you to have uh, like a fast paced build or a slow paced build with like more impact. So maybe that's like some really cooldown heavy or resource heavy skills. So naturally you want to go with a slow weapon for those. And then you have like some others, maybe you do stutter step around with uh, like a fast paced uh, wither build and uh, then the wand is going to be better. So obviously there are some uh, some things like that. They also mentioned that every weapon has a specific like base stat. So you can see here, for example, the shield always has like a shield block. I mean, yeah, that seems quite natural. And uh, then the wand always has maybe this this, this four percent crit chance. So it's kind of like a the base stat, uh, similar to PoE with the the implicit stats. And then you have here the axe that always has a chance to bleed. So I think this is pretty cool. This gives identity to items. And it's also, especially when it comes to crafting, especially when it comes to trading, uh, you might want to build specifically for some of these stats and kind of stack them or uh, otherwise, you know, just try to get the best item for your build. And uh, then having, you know, that the right item type with the right stats can be uh, really amazing to find. And I believe this is a pretty good way to give more identity to those items too. Now here comes a really interesting part about item qualities. So they did mention that they want to make uh, magic items roll higher values of certain stats, but fewer of them. And then you have rare items that can roll, I think, up to five stats, magic up to two. And then you have those uh, legendary items that roll four stats and one legendary stat. So you can see this here. And uh, for example, they have this hit effect of immobilized chance. So the, the magic item has 16.8% chance. And then you have this uh, rare weapon here with uh, 11% and you have the legendary of 9%. I believe this is amazing and it makes gearing and, and these choices very, very cool and also doesn't invalidate all the lower end stuff or like lower end stuff uh, to some degree. 
So you might have, you know, some build that really needs, you know, just one stat like, you know, willpower or, you know, a, a proc or whatever. Maybe you can play like some kind of like, you know, proc support uh, with like a lot of stun chance in a group or you have, you know, some super resource hungry build, as I mentioned earlier. So you want to stack only blue items that have, I don't know, the 10% resource cost reduction or any kind of like that uh, stuff like that. I think this can be opening up a lot of paths for a character progression without really forcing you into just going for those uniques or legendaries only. And uh, it will be pretty amazing to see these builds that come out out of this. So theory crafting wise, this is incredible. And I believe that should even uh, improve this effectiveness on some of these uh, blue items. You have only have two stats, which is not even half of the stats that you have on other items. But obviously you want to stack certain effects on certain builds and it might be worth completely ignoring you know, all the other stuff you can get, like the life or the resistances or the attack speed or whatever, and uh, just you know completely doubling down on something like that. I think it's cool to have this option and uh, it can make the gearing really interesting. And for the legendary items, you see this is the legendary stat. So it seems like you have these legendary stats and they can roll on different items. So here is on a staff with just knock down enemies, take additional damage. But uh, apparently this can also happen on other skills, uh, on other slots like a helm or gloves or they didn't really say specifically if this can roll on any slot and they don't, didn't really say if you can stack them. I assume you can probably not stack them but or maybe some of them stack and some others don't. But the item seems to be defined mostly by this legendary stat when it drops as a legendary. Here's a few more examples of these. So you see at one time you have these boots. When you stand inside your damaging ground effects, you, you increase the damage they deal by 27%. This can be here, or this can also be on the chest piece. And you also see in the name, it's Boots of Perilous Tread, and here's Tunic of Perilous Tread. So it seems also the name is going to be defined by the legendary stat. And then all the other stats kind of like roll randomly. And the same here with those uh, Chilling Frost Boots and Amulets. So chill effects will trigger freeze faster, but they will deal less frost damage. So this already looks like some kind of like, you know, supporting uh, build or some supporting um, like crowd control effects at least. So you can play a frost sorceress for DPS or you can also play some frost skills with these items and then maybe deal fire damage yourself and you have a lot of control. So that seems amazing. I also believe like these values here seem very reasonable. They're not really super high, like thousands of percent or whatever that we can see in the other three. And uh, it seems like, you know, they don't completely invalidate all the other choices that you make. So this is a very good direction they're taking here. And you can see some other interesting effects. So looking at this, you know, being kind of like the, the start of the itemization of, you know, what they will probably use as the baseline and the power level of items, I believe that we are in a really good spot. Also, if you look at these stats that these items have, it doesn't really look like a lot. You know, you have 18 life regen and you have 9% control duration bonus. But I believe these are actually the values that we are that we should be aiming for. So it's not really great to have, you know, huge values on you know, these, these stats because it will just lead to incredible power creep and eventually it's going to blast for everything. I believe that even in good gear, the, the high-end content should stay challenging to some degree. And it seems like these uh, stat values that we see here kind of ensure that. So I'm quite excited about it. But obviously it's way too early to tell anything about balance. And uh, I just think that for now this looks like it's very promising. And here are some examples of unique items. So they always come with the same stats. They have like predetermined, you know, this and that. And maybe there's like some minor adjustments or minor roll ranges. And that's about it. And they also have like a special effect, kind of like the legendary st items. The difference here is that on the legendary items, the, the legendary stat is randomized and it can also happen on other slots. Well, here you have like one item with one identity with, you know, a certain set of roles and that's it. So again, I think these look amazing from, you know, what they do, how they can define builds. If you look at these effects here, for example, poisons no longer deal damage over time, but everything at the end, but it's increased. Or you have like a uh, hurricane and you spawn tornadoes. So you can also like, you know, double down on kind of like some elementalist fantasy there. Or you have this uh, lacerate and thrash item. I mean, this one already I can tell it seems insanely strong uh, without knowing anything about the balance of the game. Um, this looks ridiculous. 
But I don't know. As I said, it's too very early for banners. But <laughs> just something to mention here, I guess. If you remember, they also mentioned these mythic items that we are supposed to be able to get, where you can kind of combine multiple legendary effects. And these would be like very unique items in the sense that they are so random that it's basically impossible to get a copy of the same item because they have like three or four different legendary stats and uh, really go crazy. So it seems like they put away with this for now. Maybe they're gonna come again later in the development process or maybe down the line in an expansion. You might have uh, the opportunity to get something similar to that. Um, I don't think this is really a big problem. I think these items already look great. And with especially those legendary items being like randomized, you can kind of like, you know, collect a few of them or trade for them and, you know, build your character with certain, uh, with certain uh, stats, with certain effects on your items. So I heard from some people that they're quite concerned about, you know, the, the item keeping and uh, the item sorting. Uh, I believe that it's not going to be a, a huge issue. So we're probably going to have enough stash space, I assume, to just, you know, throw stuff in there, maybe sort it, you know, you can sort by item type or can sort by legendary stats or, uh, you know, by a class or whatever. And um, since there's going to be some kind of like, you know, name uh, change involved with, you know, what legendary stat rolls on them, I believe it's not going to be too much item management in your stash. But obviously it just depends a bit on you know, how many items there are, how many of them are relevant uh, on the actual like market, I guess, uh, in the game. Uh, of, you know, what is going to be the meta, what is going to be useless. So obviously not everything is going to be amazing and great and powerful and some others are going to be very sought after. But uh, this is something that we'll have to see. I think uh, if you have played any PoE, then this will absolutely not be a big thing because uh, inventory management is pretty heavy there and most likely it's going to be way less than that because we're not going to have you know so many crafting materials so many small little things that will drop everywhere so you're mostly going to have items and we're going to have gold and we're going to have maybe scrolls and it doesn't seem like maybe there's some gems and runes okay but that's about it it seems so overall even with all these different items i don't believe that this is going to be a big concern here yeah all in all i gotta say that uh, i'm really excited i would love to just jump in right now and play whatever they have right now and uh, just see what i can do with you know whatever build whatever beta or alpha version they might have and uh, see all the different items see the different skills that are already um, kind of like being worked on or in, in progress but uh, obviously that's not possible uh, I just really get the itch to theory craft here and I believe that if they keep going forward with this in this direction this is going to be amazing we're going to probably have a lot of fun discovering builds theory crafting builds and you know just making all kinds of things possible so yeah this is my two cents to share here and uh, I hope you also like this update uh, go check it out I have the link in the description and I also hope you enjoy my thoughts here so that's about it and see you guys next time